easy, Tosh. What's all this about then? Word is it's you, Tosh. Me? Yeah. Too many kids, not enough collars. <laughs> <laughs> right, everybody. We're not getting enough information through. And as a result, the clear up figures are suffering. What's more to the point, though, is that certain criminals are behaving as if we didn't exist. Now, I don't want to mention any names, but some of you seem to have forgotten how to recruit informants. I want the intelligence computer singing, not just working a three day week. And if some of you feel hampered by the new rules, just remember they're there to protect you. So let's get stuck into every suspect. And everyone you turn over, you register with me, and if I'm not here, with Chris. When he's here? Well, that's the point, Danny. He's out there now talking to an informant. Chrissy. Still following me? It was nice to see you. Especially in court. You don't know who your friends are, Chrissy. You're right, I don't. You wanted to see me? I thought you had some. I think they're on to me. I think the rest of them suspect. Paul, we've been here before. No. You've been careful. You're always careful. In your ways. I know. So, you've got nothing to worry about. Something's wrong. Paul, you know the agreement, don't you? The last time Chrissy was arrested, I looked after her. And you knew you could rely on me, didn't you? So, now it's your turn to deliver. Look, all I've got to do is go and check her buggy and I'll find Chrissy's gear. Maybe more than she needs for her personal use. And then, where did she get the money from? Yeah, right. Right. So, what's going down? It's heroin. Big shipment. You sure? Yeah. When? I don't know. I'll know it soon. But I'll tell you when I can, as soon as I can. It's also time that you gave me the name of the main dealer. No, I can't do that. <laughs> Never give you names until the whole deal's set up. That's superstition. It's not before. All right, we'll do it your way. Oh dear, what's the matter with you? Bad morning. Bad night, more like. She's giving you trouble again, Jim. Won't let you sleep. Oh, very funny. Andy Geary's just slipped through the net again. Who's failed to shop him now? Darren James, small-time dealer. The tape is littered with Geary's name. But there's no hard evidence and there's nothing to go on. Uh, we've just nicked a body for check card fraud. Doesn't want a brief. Any takers? Check card fraud? Yeah. There's been five of those this last week. We'll take it. Might be a way into the gang. I picked up Raylan when I first got to Samuel. He's always been a bit close to the age, but this time he's really nervous. He thinks they're onto him. Right. So I keep quiet, say nothing. Look, Susie, I know you've come in as co-angel, right? And I know that the rules say that we've got to go in two up and stop them crying Ben. But Ronan's so nervous that I think if you saw you, he'd do a run -off. So I stay in the car. Just till I've got you calm down, yeah? Right, go. They're on to me. Don't want me to be a courier. Can't do it anymore. Paul, you need to be edgy to watch your own back. You're too good to let them catch you up. It's not just that. This way, you save Chrissy. You've stopped her from going down. You've stopped her. And you get the money. That's useful, isn't it? What's bothering you? It's Chrissy. Something's going on. She in trouble? I think there's... I think there's someone else. Do you want to talk about it? <laughs> yeah. This is a taped interview with Carl Fenton. Officers present, DSP, DC Scase. Time is 10.10. I remind you, Carl, that you're under caution. You do not have to say anything. But it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. What does that mean, then? That's not what they say in the films, is it? Well, you don't have to say anything now, but if you tell the court something which you haven't told us, it could damage your case. All right, Carl? Well, am I going to court? Well, we don't know until we started, do we? So you don't know there's something wrong with Chrissy. 
Remember, Paul, this always happens. Just before the deal goes down, you lose your nerve. About everything, this time it's Chrissy as well. We're almost there. Just hang on in till we get this one sorted, then Chrissy's safe, you get the money, and we break off all contact for two months, just like before. Yeah. Sometimes I think this is the only reason I carry on giving you information. What? Having someone I can talk to. Look, Carl, you're not the only one doing cards. We know that. You're not on your own, are you? I ain't saying anything. There's a gang, isn't there? No, there ain't. You're telling me there's no gang? This time there ain't no one else. But usually there is a gang. There was this old geezer in the market. I had a sneak to stuff when he wasn't looking. I wanted to do it myself this time. Do what, Carl? Try to get the money with a check. I wanted to see if I could get money like that. Who usually does it? Oh, I nicked checked cars before. I exchanged them. Exchange them for what? For what? Drugs? Yeah. Who gave you the drugs, Carl? <laughs> I'm not saying. All right. Do you get a drink? Do you get a cup of tea? No. Would you like one? Yeah, please. Interview terminated, 1040. You've been in trouble before, haven't you, Carl? It's all down here. Burglary, one, two, three, lots of burglaries. Drugs, two, possession, fines, probation, community service. Prison next, Carl, you know that, don't you? I don't want to go to jail. Well, it would be jail. Jail's tough, tougher if you do drugs. Hard on people who can't look after themselves. I can't go there. Yeah. Looks a real possibility, Carl. Sorry, Susie. Girlfriend trouble. Roland's girlfriend. He's got to talk to someone, hasn't he? See, it doesn't have to be like this, Carl. You can be important to us. You're in trouble, and you've been in trouble before. Now, we respect little guys who are big enough to shop the real villains. What have we found out? I told you, Carl. We respect the people who help us. And we make sure the villains they finger never know the difference. And we we'll look after them in another way, too. You help us like this, I'll make sure you don't go down. Yeah, we can have a little word of the judge. He might look favourably on your case. Trust me, Carl. What's his name? Do you really talk to the judge? If people help us, we let the judge know. I could do that for you if you're worried about jail. He's a major dealer. What's his name? Yeah, his name's Geary. Andy Geary? No, I don't know his first name. Everyone just calls him Geary. He has his own place in Monier Avenue. That's good, Carl. Anything else? I can find out where the drugs are. The same big going down. And you would know where that's happening? Oh, yeah, I'll know. Great. Well, we can work together on this to set this up. Do you a lot of good. It's like being a spy. Yeah. Yeah, a bit like that. Do I have my own code name? Yes, that can help. Can I be a... Uh, a black falcon? Sure. And you always report to me or Detective Constable Skates. He'll be working with you too. Gough? Danny. I think I've got a lead on Andy Geary. Really? I'm registering a new snout with you, Carl Fenton. Well, be careful, Danny. Geary's stayed out of the frame for a long time. He's not your average Sun Hill pusher. Yeah, but it looks as though something big is going down, though, Gov. Just need eyes in the right place. Well, some people have got it, and some people haven't, eh, Jim? What? We've got the lead on Andy Geary. You're on to Geary? Well, you never told me, Rob. You're not going to hook him with that joker, the Black Falcon. <laughs> the Black Falcon? <laughs> <laughs> OK, Rod, he's not brilliant, but he's part of it and he's keen. He's living in a fantasy world. He wants to be James Bond. <laughs> well, I hope you're not winging it on this one, Sarge. Look, he wants to please. If he was any smarter, he'd be too right. scared to shop Geary. We use what we've got. Yeah, yeah, hold on. It's for you. It's the Black Falcon. <laughs> Detective Sergeant Pierce. Yeah. When? You sure? Right. The drugs are there. 
Rod, check Geary's address. Then we get a search warrant. Well, have you got enough for one? We know something's going to happen. You've got to take the occasional punt if you want to get results. <laughs> Thought you weren't coming. What's it out, Paul? What's going on? They've changed the time and the place. I don't know what's going down. No one's saying anything. Well, it happens. Nothing's coming through. I've helped you before. I'll help you again. I just know this one's dangerous. Just a bit longer, Paul. Plans change. Last minute confusion. You know that. I can't. I can't. They'll kill me. How many times have you been wrong before? You know what'll happen if you pull the plug, don't you? How's Chrissy gonna make out in jail, eh? It's not a nice place for addicts, is it? Remember? Tell us what you know, and then that's that. Oh, come on, Paul. I've been running around after you all bloody morning. I need something. There might be something in this, Jim. Danny's not often wrong. Yeah? Well, I reckon he's been sold a pup on this one. <laughs> Lines from Pierce. We're now at the front door. Stand by. He might do a runner. Come on. Yeah? Police. Andrew Geary, I'm Detective Sergeant Pierce. This is Detective Constable Scase. Right. We have a warrant to search these premises for controlled substances. Oh, yeah, go on in, you can. Let Jim and Tosh in. It's a lot of you, isn't it? Must be serious. Soon find out. All right, if I have a drink. Do what you want. Do you want? No, thanks. I only drink with people I like. What are you doing here? You've seen the warrant. We have reason to believe there's drugs on these premises. Oh, yeah? What reason's that? Then? Enough for a warrant. The magistrates are satisfied. Nah, 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 nah. Someone's misled you, Sergeant. You ought to uh, double-check your information, you know what I mean? Mm. Save it, Geary. Your snout's probably got his own reasons for having a pop at me. He's got you lot to do it for him, hasn't he? Envy's a terrible thing, Sergeant. You work hard, earn a few bob, get yourself a nice place. People start accusing you of being a drug dealer. So what's going on? The snout was mistaken, Gov. Mistaken or lying? I don't think lying's the right word for it, sir. So what word would you use? Look, I know it didn't work out, but he's not trying to con us. Your informant wrong-footed you on Geary. He's going to be very careful in the future. Yeah, I know, Gov. If an informant fails to deliver, you investigate very carefully what went wrong before you think about using him again. So do that and watch it. I don't want my officers being led up the garden path. The snout isn't leading us anywhere. Yes? Detective Sergeant Pierce. Oh, yeah. God, can I have a word? Later, Rod. Sure. Wait. What is a snout fever? Yeah, something like that. I think I'm on the edge of something, though. Were well, you in the DI? Well, more him than me. One of his informants, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it must be really nice to see a good informant at work. Rod? Yeah. We're off. We've got another lead on Geary. Sorry, Susie. Black Falcon's taken flight. <laughs> He's got one last chance. Well, you know the DI's on the edge of something big again. Gear is meeting a courier in a warehouse in the Bradford Road. That's where the gear will be stashed. So what did happen last time, Sarge? Where was the dope? Like I said, Rod, he had one last chance. Well, that's how I told you so. So. Oh, no. Get the stuff off him. Gov? Danny? Well, we've got a body. I thought it might be our snout, Gov. No, Danny. He's mine. Oh. Well, whichever way you look at it, it's a cock up with a dead body at the end of it. You were both onto the same gang. Yeah, so it seems. It takes two of you, two of them, to get nothing. One of your snouts is killed. Yeah. So what the hell's going on? Rowlands was a completely reliable snout. In three years, he never gave us any duff information. Now, Danny Snout's obviously got something, but we've got to get to him quick before he gets his head blown off. Well, I want it brought under control before it leaks out under the street that we can't protect our snouts. I wanted to keep this between ourselves, but I've got Amip on the way over now. That was quick. I bet they're looking forward to airing our dirty laundry. 
Danny. Take Danny with you and get it sorted. So your new informant's been giving you a bit of trouble. Yes, Gov. He's made a fool of you. Sir. You better get to him before anybody else does. All right, Sergeant. This is Detective Inspector Deakin, my governor. All right. So this is the man who didn't deliver us Geary. Yeah. Roland's dead. We found him at the place you sent us to. I'm an informant. Sergeant Pierce is going to talk to the judge. Okay. What do you know about Roland? I don't know nothing. All we've had from you is crap information and a dead body. Well, I don't know nothing about a dead body. You are in big trouble. You made it up, Fenton. No, I... Yeah, I made it up the first time, but I just wanted to help Sergeant Pierce. So I followed Geary down to a warehouse in Bagford Road. I saw Mick Rowland there. I knew Rowland worked for Geary. I thought he was his courier. So the drugs would be there too. So... <laughs> what about Rowland? Is he dead? Yeah. I don't really know anything else about Rowland. Except... What? Well, after the search, Geary was suspicious. He knew there was a grass, but I don't think he thought it was me. I hardly ever saw Roland. I saw his girlfriend, Chrissy, with Geary a couple of times. It's got to be Geary. Have a word with Chrissy. Well, we're taking him. You sort him out. It's about time, isn't it? Sir, Detective Superintendent Wells. Yeah. Yeah, Hello, sir. Jack. This is Detective Sergeant Andrea Camp here. Well, the rest of the team will be along directly. Well, DSP will be here in a minute. In the meantime, I'll bring you up to speed. From what I hear, someone's yeah. screwed up. Left hand doesn't seem to know what the right hand's doing, and the head missed them both. Can I come in? Can I stop you? I need your help, Chrissy. Find Paul's killer. I know what he did for you. Haven't you finished with him yet? And I know what he did for you. Yes, because you had him cornered. He used me as bait to keep Paul a grass. I don't know what you've taken away. The man who paid for your hand. <laughs> you don't understand, do you? Paul did everything to get me off drugs, everything. He didn't pay for my drugs. Paid in the end, though, didn't he? We are both to blame, Chrissy. He knew you were seeing someone else. He told you that? He had no one else to talk to, did he? He weren't there. I know. The least we can do for Paul is to get his killer. So talk to me. Uh, there was a dealer. I met him once with Paul. I knew he exchanged things. I um, tried to exchange a, a check card for drugs. He said it wasn't enough. He needed the checkbook. And I was desperate. He suggested I could sell something else. So I gave him sex for smack. It was a bargain, so I went back and did the same again. Andrew Geary? He told me he was expecting a big delivery. I never told no one about that, but the police came today and searched his flat, and he thought Paul had grasped him up. So he killed him? I knew he was dead because Geary gave me this. A trophy, he said. Because Paul was a grass and because he was with me. Geary doesn't think I'll grass him up. He thinks I need my fixes too badly. Paul trusted you. I don't know why. He trusted me too, and he had no reason to do that either. 
Chrissy, I'm gonna need more than a chain. It's not enough. Yeah, I thought so. I saw Geary's gun. He wrapped it in plastic and stuffed it in a water tank at the back of his house. If he's gone, he got me for what I'm worth. I owe that much to Paul. Sir, just had a call from Deakin. He's asked you to meet him at 42 Monier Avenue. He's got good information that Andy Geary is our suspect and he's still got the weapon. More good information? I have to say, Jack, right now I haven't got much faith in Deakin's tip-offs. Sir, there's no one better than Chris at dealing with informants. I mean, I know he's screwed up, but I think we should give him the chance to get it right. I'm investigating a murder here, Jack, not saving your DI's skin. Well, if this information is correct, sir, Geary will be moving the gun soon. And without that, you haven't got very much. Right. I'll meet him. But this is about leads, Jack. Not loyalty. Deacon to Wells. Suspect is leaving his property and moving in the direction of Elverton Gardens. Wells to Deacon. We'll try and head him off at the bottom. Detective Superintendent Wells Amick, I'm arresting you for the murder of Paul Rowland. Oh, this is ridiculous, man. You searched my place for drugs and found nothing. What? Well, it's murder now, is it? And we're going to search it again, Mr. Geary. Maybe we should start here. Look under the paving stones. You won't find nothing there. You wouldn't be stupid enough to leave it in the water tank, would you, Geary? Hey? Look, Superintendent. Can I think we should look in there. Go ahead, Chris. Very stupid, Geary. Not getting rid of the gun. Put yourself a new snout, have you, Inspector? Can't sing much lower than that. She won't last long now. Oh, take him pop. down the station! Well, Chris, looks like you've got a result. So I'll overlook your behaviour this time. But I want a full explanation when we get back to Sun Hill, right? Sir. Gov, I uh, wanted to apologise. What? About Roland. Goes with the territory, Danny. <laughs> 